welcome back. It has been a source of constant frustration for me that so many labor unions are against the oil patch, denouncing ethical oil as a joke, opposing pipelines, and I don't get it because so many of those pipeline jobs, refinery jobs, oil jobs are unionized themselves. So it came as welcome good news to me to see a labor union coming out in favor of a pipeline. And joining me now from Calgary is the boss of that union, Gil McGowan, the president of the Alberta Federation of Labor. Hey, Gil, welcome back to the show. It's always a pleasure to be here, but I should correct you a little bit. I'm actually in Edmonton, not Calgary. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, it's uh, Alberta, it's, uh, it's the oil province, and there's a proposal to reverse a pipeline called Line 9. So right now that is taking foreign OPEC oil from the east and shipping it west. The proposal, as our viewers know, is to take it from the west and ship it east. Tell me why your union supports that. Well, first, I'll just remind your viewers that our federation, which represents most unions in Alberta, has opposed uh, many recent pipelines. Uh, and so it might come as a little bit of a surprise to you that, uh, and your listeners uh, that we support this particular pipeline. Uh, but we don't think that our position on this one is either surprising or inconsistent. In fact, we've been saying uh, right from the beginning for the past seven or eight years since we've been dealing with the issue of pipeline expansion that uh, as a labor movement here in Alberta, we are not opposed to pipelines per se. What we are opposed to uh, are pipelines that export value-added jobs from Canada to other countries uh, like the United States and China. And unfortunately, most of the pipelines that have been proposed and built over the last few years have been what we describe as bitumen export pipelines. They're bitumen superhighways that, along with the oil, take uh, very valuable jobs in upgrading and refining. And the reason that we're supporting Line 9 is because it does exactly the opposite of that. Instead of uh, sending our raw product to refineries in places like the United States or China, this uh, this project will do what we've been asking for for years, which will take Alberta bitumen uh, to refineries primarily in Quebec, so Montreal and Quebec City. Uh, and so it's a win-win situation for, uh, for um, uh, workers here in Alberta, because not only will it be exporting uh, oil from Alberta to Quebec, it will primarily be exporting upgraded oil. So it's going to create value-added jobs or support value-added jobs that already exist here in Alberta, uh, and it's going to send it to refineries where, where it'll in Quebec and uh, Quebec City and Montreal will be further upgraded. So it creates and maintains jobs in Alberta. It creates and maintains jobs in Quebec. And that's the kind of infrastructure that we in the, uh, in the Alberta and Canadian labor movement can, can get behind uh, because it's the kind of exactly the kind of infrastructure that uh, is good for Canadian workers and good for the Canadian economy. And it frustrates me that it's taken us so long to start building these kind of pipelines, mm -hmm. which are job creating and job cre sustaining pipelines as opposed to job exporting pipelines. You'll you know what, we had someone on the show uh, speaking for one of those refineries in Quebec, uh, Michel Martin was his name. He said that if this pipeline is reversed, that that refinery might hire up to 200 new yeah. workers. And I, that's just such an amazing story. Uh, I, I'm so pleased to hear. But I want to ask you a question, because I know that Line 9 has been opposed by a lot of busybody activists, including a group called Environmental Defense. And they are part of the labor union coalition they're part of the blue green coalition they call it what can you say or have you said anything to your allies in the labor union movement saying hey guys fine if you want to oppose other pipelines you know we're not going to dispute that but support us for line now you know me gil i'm for all yeah. pipelines but have you tried to convince your fellow travelers on the left to get out of the way of the line nine reversal well, first of all, I would uh, make a distinction. Uh, environmental justice is an environmental group, first and foremost. Uh, we have made common cause with them in the past on, uh, on other issues, but we've made it clear uh, from the beginning on Line 9 that we would be taking uh, a different position, and uh, I guess we've just agreed to disagree. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you about the hearings, because as you know, uh, although the pipeline has been underground for almost 40 years and it's been reversed a few times already, it still has to go through a regulatory hearing run by the National Energy Board. Will the, your union make a representation uh, to that energy board, even if it's just in writing? I have to say politically, it would be salutary to have a representative of working men saying, hey, there are union members who support this. Have you guys done that or have you considered doing that? 
Actually, we've done it already. Oh, good. Uh, the hearings are just about to wrap up, and uh, we actually submitted our final arguments in favor of Line 9 uh, last week. And it wasn't just the Alberta Federation of Labor, uh, but we were also joined by the Communication Energy Paper Workers Union, which represents uh, 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 value added uh, upgrader and refinery workers in both Alberta and Quebec. So both our federation and CEP um, have uh, spoken out in support of this particular line. Uh, and like I say, it is consistent consistent with the position that we, with both CEP and the AFL have been taking for years, which is that, yes, we should develop our uh, natural resources, inclu including our oil sands resources, but uh, we should develop uh, those resources in a way that actually uh, creates and sustains jobs Your here last in Canada, question. as opposed to shipping them down the pipeline. I got one last question for it sure. for you, and you may not have had a chance to assess this because it's a new idea. I'm talking about the proposal by TransCanada to build a pipeline called Energy East. It's a $12 billion yep. project, so tons of construction jobs. Yep. And it, the destination would be St. John, which I think a lot of Canadians would be surprised to learn is the biggest refinery in Canada. Uh, so obviously a lot of refining jobs out there, obviously a lot of construction jobs, the things worth $12 billion. Has your union taken a position on Energy East yet? We have, Ezra, and unfortunately I think you're going to be disappointed because um, we're going to end up opposing that pipeline, at least as it's currently proposed, uh, because it will do uh, exactly what other export-only pipelines, bitumen export pipelines, uh, have been doing, with, like the Keystone Pipeline, the Gateway Pipeline. It's going to take raw bitumen, uh, and instead of taking it to that refinery in, uh, in uh, New Brunswick, which I agree with you is the biggest refinery in the country, but the plans, as they're stated right now, uh, are to build a export uh, terminal. Well, some uh, in of the it would be right exported, next, but that's a, at, but not still a, not a drop, not a drop, not a drop of it will go to to the refinery. That's in, so um, wrong, in, Gil. That's why they want it. it. It's, it's gonna it. It's not that that, that pipeline is not going to be taking Alberta bitumen uh, to the refinery in in uh, St. John's. It's going to be taking it right by it because they're going to build an export terminal right next to the refinery, and every drop uh, of that oil is going to be put on ships and sent overseas. Not a single uh, drop of it is going to go to the refinery in St. John's. It will not create any upgrading jobs in Alberta. It will not create any refinery jobs in St. John's. And, and it couldn't, even if it, without uh, expanding the St. John's, ref, John's refinery and turning into it what we call a coking refinery, as it's tooled right now, it, it actually couldn't accept a drop of uh, raw bitumen from Alberta uh, as feedstock because the plant simply, it's a big one, but it can't, it's not tooled uh, to, uh, to take Alberta raw bitumen. And until that happens, this will not be the kind of win win scenario that we're seeing with Line 9. Gil, we're out of time. I'm glad you come on the show. You and I disagree on many things, but I want to find what common ground we do have on this great industry, the oil and gas. I want to have you on again, and I want to sure. talk more about Energy East. And I, I don't think I'll be able to convince you, but I'll do my best to try. Great to see you on the show today. Okay, thanks, Ezra. Thanks.